Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to give it just a few more minutes to get to two o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll get started. And while we have a few minutes, can someone post in the chat box if you're able to hear me? And also if you're able to see the first slide, the title slide. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Gail and Christy. Julie, thank you so much. Appreciate that. And a couple of things, just uh, while we have a few moments, we are going to be recording the webinar and also posting that on the Giving Tuesday website that we have. Also, that's going to be in our resource center. We have a section dedicated just to webinars. And also for those who have registered for the webinar, so all of you, you're going to be receiving via email, you'll receive a copy of the recording as well. So if you need to skip out a little bit earlier, if something comes up, or if you just miss something and you want to kind of revisit it, no problem, you'll receive that, that recording. And also, we'll have some time at the end for questions and things like that as well. So we'll give it about two more minutes. Thank you everyone for letting me know that you can see me and that you can also see the, the slide. That's the probably the most important part. Thank you for that. We'll give it just a few more minutes here. just about another minute. I appreciate everyone taking time. I know right now it's just a super busy time, not just for nonprofits, but in general, uh, but particularly for nonprofits with Giving Tuesday kind of coming to a close and gearing up for end of year. I know things are really busy. So I appreciate you taking the time to carve out for the webinar. And also with all the holidays going on, I hope everyone had a wonderful and a restful Thanksgiving. I can't believe it's already a week has gone by. It's been a good week, but uh, we're kind of back into things super fast. So it's two o'clock now. I'm going to give it just another moment and then we'll go ahead and get started. And I had a chance to mention this before. I'll mention it again. We are recording the webinar just so that everyone knows. So let's go ahead, we're gonna launch in, we're gonna get started. Welcome to our webinar, How to Thank Your Giving Tuesday Donors. My name is Ashley Kefalitis. I'm one of the community development specialists here at Mighty Cause. And again, I'm just really excited to have you join us. Thank you so much for taking the time to jump on today. And to make the most of thanking our donors, we're gonna look at making it personal, mailing your thanks, showing your gratitude publicly, offering a unique donor experience, building gratitude into your fundraising strategy, so a little more long-term. And we're also adding some bonus content on transitioning from Giving Tuesday to end of year giving. And then of course, at the end, we'll have some time for questions. And if you have a question during the presentation, go ahead and post that in the chat. I'll be sure to save some time at the end. We'll look at those and any new questions that come up. And just one more time, we are gonna record or we are currently recording the webinar and this is gonna be emailed to everyone who registered. So it may take a few days, but you'll have the recording to look back on if you need to or share with someone else. 
in your organization if they missed out. So on to thanking our donors and let's make it personal. The reality is we're living in a digital age which offers so many benefits, particularly when it comes to fundraising and getting that broad donor base. Yet one of the drawbacks is developing an over-reliance on the digital experience. So we definitely want you to feel free to send out those thank you emails, letting your donors know the outcome of Giving Tuesday and how their contribution will help to further your mission. But we also want you to come up with a plan for how to segment your donors and your donor audience and then thank them personally. And we wanna build relationships with our donors and all relationships require that personal touch. And how do we make it personal? Well, we pick up the phone. It doesn't get much more personal than that person to person interaction. And we can't meet one-on-one -on -one with everyone. So the next best thing is a phone call and just a one to three minute phone call with an actual person versus a recording. An actual person does wonders for donor retention, even if you're just leaving a voicemail. And it doesn't need to be elaborate and you don't need to do this alone, that's for sure. Gather your staff, some volunteers, your board members, provide them the names, phone numbers, and a script. And all of you as a crew, you'll be on your way to building those relationships with your donors. And volunteers, even board members, others, they might be concerned that a donor has a question that they don't have the answer to, because there's a lot of moving parts in an organization. You don't know what someone might ask, and that's okay. We don't have to be afraid of those conversations. We can just have a simple, I'll have someone get back to you about that. Is this the best number to reach you? That's all we need to say, and donors want to know. They don't want to be inconvenient. So that one-on-one, -on -one, that phone call, and a lot of times it's going to go to voicemail, so you leave the voicemail and breathe a sigh of relief does wonders for making it personal. Another way to make it personal is to send a personal note. So remember, we wanna build those relationships and there's just something about a handwritten note that can't be replicated. And because most thank yous, although they're genuine, they're not handwritten, your thank you, your personal handwritten note will be memorable. And being memorable is the first step and retaining that donor. And like the phone calls, this can be easy when you share the task. So enlist your team members and provide a script. And you can also make this fun. Host a holiday thank you party with your team. You get your team together, you write your thank you cards for Giving Tuesday donors, and you create some year-end appeals to 2021 donors that haven't yet given in 2020. And you can personalize each note, stuff the envelopes together, make it fun. You can streamline the process. If you really want to get exciting, play a holiday movie, play some music, order lunch, bring cookies, hot chocolate, make it a, make it a thing, make it a tradition. And it becomes a time for camaraderie within your organization. And it also is thanking your donors. So win-win all the way around. And you might be wondering when's the best time to send a personal note? And the answer is anytime. It's always a good time for that personal note. But we know that it's not always practical to send a single personal note to every donor all the time. So be sure that you follow up with that personal note after a specific campaign, such as Giving Tuesday or end of the year. You also want to make note if anyone sets up a recurring gift. So if there's a monthly gift that someone just started, make sure you highlight that because it's definitely unique. And on the anniversary of a donor's first donation, that goes a long way. And this is also where your Mighty Cause donation reports and retention report come in. You can download your reports to gather the information you need to make your personal notes truly personal. And segment your donors into groups such as first-time donors, monthly donors, yearly donors, super big donors. Once you segment your donors, then tailor the script of your personal note to each donor set to show that they truly are unique. And mail them your thanks. I know we were just talking about the personal note and that, of course, 
includes the mailing, but there's other mailings that you can do as well. So emails, they do hold an important place in your marketing strategy, but emails are a busy form of communication. It's what we use in work. It's what we use with friends. There's what we use with our doctor's offices, depending. So there's a lot that goes on with emails and you don't want your thank you message to be part of the everyday computer load. So you want it to stand alone. And what better way to do this than through the mail? A physical thank you is hard to miss when that email thank you can easily end up in your spam folder. That's not going to happen with that mailed thank you note. You can also mail welcome packets. Welcome packets are a great way to underscore your thank you to new donors. Welcome a welcome packet, whether it's a conference, a new hotel, a wedding, it tells the recipients that they are now part of an exclusive club. We don't give welcome packets to just anyone. So sending a welcome packet to your donors is a tangible way to build that connection. Donors give because they choose to identify who they are with your mission. And this is a big deal that shouldn't be treated lightly. Your welcome packet conveys to your donors that you get it, that it matters to them. And the more they feel valued and a part of your group, the more they will invest in your mission in the future. And that's just not monetary wise, but also that could be volunteering, that could be getting involved. So what do you include in that welcome packet? Definitely education materials and information about your programs and your services. Why? Because whatever brought your donor to you is just the tip of the iceberg. You know the depths of your nonprofit mission work. Your donors don't always. And the welcome packet is your first introduction. So what do you want everyone to know about your work? You're gonna display that here in the welcome packet. Also include a token of appreciation or membership. And this doesn't need to be fancy or break, break the bank, just needs to be a token. And many nonprofits work with local businesses for discounts on those promotional items. So it's a win-win on all sides. Just be sure that your token, of your token of appreciation demonstrates your organization's impact and it creates an emotional connection with your donors. So for example, an animal rescue may send a photo and a story of a recent rescue, or an organization focused on children may have the children within their program draw the thank you pictures. So it can be simple, but meaningful. And depending on your packet and your thank you note, Consider including the note in the welcome packet or send the note separately. Both are good options as you look at how to steward your donor communication. Both are good and it might be that sending that thank you note separate creates that one more touch with your donor that's helpful. Or if funds are a concern, then go ahead and add that thank you note to the welcome packet. Both are good. Another aspect of thanking your donors is to show your thanks publicly. Most donors don't mind a shout out. In fact, an earned recognition goes a long way in feeling valued. It's a simple way to acknowledge your donors in addition to that personal thank you. So where do you make this public display of gratitude? You make it anywhere that you meet the public. So this can be through your newsletter, in your facility, you could have something in your lobby, or it could be on your website or anywhere on social media. Whatever fits best with the flow of your communication, go ahead and add that donor gratitude in there. And you also may wanna consider adding a thank you section within your annual report or creating a donor focused annual report. Annual reports are the perfect opportunity to show your donors the impact their donations are making so you display the facts and the figures that powerfully connect your donors to your outcomes. And then dedicate a portion of your, of your report to naming your donors. It's simple if you're already putting together that, that annual report. So to add that donation recognition, it's a pretty simple way to do that. And the end of year is the best time to be sending that out. So you can get this to your donors in whatever way is best for you. If you can mail it, great. If you need to email it, 
that's great too. Just be sure to emphasize to your donors that it's their donations that are making your success possible. Also, thank your donors by offering a unique donor experience. So remember the ideas of identity and relationship building. Offering experiences so that your donors can see your work up close is absolutely personal and relational. And it also invites your donors to get involved in deeper levels. It's one thing to have an idea about what your organization is doing and what your mission is. It's totally different when your donors get to see it up close. So for example, you can offer certain groups of donors particular volunteer opportunities, or another group of donors may relate well to a guided tour of your nonprofit. You know your community, and you know how that donor experience can benefit both you and your donors. So make the most of it, make it fun. They're donating because they care about you. So bring them into the fold, show them the goodness of what you're doing. And one more long-term note, build your gratitude into your fundraising strategy. Donors reten excuse me, donor retention is greatly impacted by your thank you strategy. It costs less to retain an existing donor than to acquire a new. So let's do what we can to retain the ones we already have and start thinking of gratitude as an essential part of your fundraising strategy. It's not just for the end of the year. Think of it like the final chapter of a book. You don't want to leave your donor hanging. So if it's Giving Tuesday, you want to follow up on that Giving Tuesday story. And don't do gratitude on your own. Not only do you need others to help carry the load, but it reminds the rest of your team how important fundraising is. It keeps everyone in a community mindset. And never devalue the time, the money, or the effort that's spent on saying thank you. Not only does it impact your donor retention, it keeps us humble. It reminds us that we need them just as much as they need us. And it warms our hearts in the process. It refocuses us sometimes when we get lost in the minutia of everything. So with all of that, okay, it's a good thing to do. So here are some keys to keeping that appreciation in our fundraising strategy. Make it a priority within your routine and don't let it become an afterthought. Have a plan in place ahead of time. Make sure that you execute it. In her book, Donor Centered Fundraising, Penelope Burke found that donors desire prompt and personal gift acknowledgements. And Burke's research also found that first time donors who received a personal thank you and within 48 hours we're four times more likely to give again. So these thank yous are a big deal. And just as an example of working that thank you into your fundraising strategy throughout the year, there's an organization I'm familiar with that every time they have a board meeting, all board members are given 10 thank you notes. They have the same pens that they have for their organization with their branding on it. So everyone is using the same pen. Everyone writes out 10 thank you notes so that they're ready to go. So then when those donations start to come in, the donor's name can be added, the envelope is written, and that donor is thanked immediately, specifically from those board members. It's an easy thing that you can work into your strategy, but you have to be aware of it. it has to be intentional. Because this donating and thank yous are such a big deal and it's been giving Tuesday and all of this is going on, the first opportunities your donors are gonna to have to give again is end of year giving. And if you haven't already, it's definitely time to transition to end of year giving. So giving Tuesday does not replace end of year giving. In fact, giving Tuesday donations are also get, are often given, excuse me, often given in addition to end of year gifts. But how do we harness this? So we can either use our Giving Tuesday campaign to launch our end of year campaign, or we can have two separate campaigns, a Giving Tuesday campaign and an end of year campaign. So let's take a look at option one, giving to, using Giving Tuesday to launch your end of year campaign. 
You'll do this in three phases. You've already accomplished phase one, which is doing Giving Tuesday. So, all right, there we go. We're on the move. Phase two is donor engagement. And this is where your thank you messages come in. Now be prepared that in December, we often see a little bit of a giving slump between Giving Tuesday and the last days of the year. And that is okay. Take advantage of this time to steward your donors. This is when you're thanking them for what they've done and you're preparing them and reminding them that end of year is coming and you're carrying on that storyline that started with Giving Tuesday. So phase three, this is go time. And this is typically the last week to 10 days of December. And people are in the holiday spirit of giving. Some are feeling reflective and they want to end the year on a generous note. And then you have others that are just looking to get in the last tax break of the year. All of them are good. And your organization is going to be there and be available for all of them, regardless of why they're giving. And this is the time that you're going to spend sending out your most poignant storytelling. You're, you want to emotionally connect with your donors. And now is also when you're going to be focusing on the impact your donors have had throughout the year. And you're going to get them excited for all there is to come in 2023. So those stories that you started telling with Giving Tuesday, you're carrying those on and you're getting a little bit more in depth. You're going a little bit more into that connection. So use that promotional content wisely. Don't be afraid to reuse content. Just make sure that it's, it's updated if it needs to be. But the most important thing is engaging your donors. Very similar with option two, if you want to, host a separate campaign. So plan a distinctive end of year campaign. Your nonprofit's work is what it is. So your end of year story is going to reflect your Giving Tuesday story, but give it a different angle, but with the same impact. There is so much that goes on with your organization. There is another way to send out your mission just with a different angle and to still harness the hearts of your donors and make sure that your visuals are branded for end of year. So if you're reusing that visual content from Giving Tuesday, that's okay. Just make sure that you have it updated for end of year. And your Giving Tuesday campaign needs to have a distinct end. If you're going to have two separate campaigns, make sure that Giving Tuesday campaign is done and you've kind of wrapped that up. You've gone full circle with your storytelling and now you're launching your end of year content and you're excited for the new year ahead and you're grateful for all the work that's been done this year and how your donors have partnered with you. And your annual reports can be a great end of year piece of content. I know we mentioned this before, mentioning it again, because it's so true. You're able to show the impact the nonprofit has had in your community and you're gonna highlight your milestones and your successes in 2022, and you're gonna tie that into your donors. And they're gonna get excited, not only for what you've done, but they're gonna get excited to have an even greater impact in 2023. So regardless of the option you choose, whether you're gonna have that storyline carry through, or you're gonna have two distinct campaigns, take the time to make the necessary updates on your fundraising pages. This includes your Mighty Cause, that profile page that you have. Update that story section, the goals, the metrics, your checkout flow, and of course, your thank you page and your receipt messaging. How do you update that thank you page? It may have been a few weeks since you last looked at it and a lot has gone on, but you're gonna head over to your organization profile page. You're gonna select checkout on your dashboard and then you're gonna select thank you page. You can add videos, links, pictures, texts, totally customize it for end of year. And don't forget to double check the call to action button. So this button is what allows your donors to move to the next thing. So that can be check out our website, visit our thank you page, see our upcoming activities. So you can do all that through that call to action button. And you don't have to stop there. If you participated in Giving Tuesday, 
then you already know about so many of these Mighty Cause fundraising features. But did you know that we also offer a first class year round platform with all the tools that you'll need for successful campaigns? So just like we mentioned, or that thank you aspect needs to be integrated into all of your fundraising strategy throughout the year, you can use Mighty Cause throughout the year to make the most of your campaigns. And to do that, we offer an advanced subscription. And with the advanced subscription, it unlocks all of the features on our platform. This includes unlimited campaign pages. So if you wanted to do an event or just a fundraiser, you can do as many as you want, as often as you want. We also have a built-in CRM for your donor management. We have software integrations. So if you have MailChimp, if you have Salesforce, or if you use Constant Contact, we have so many applications to integrate with that's going to make that donor management and that donor engagement easier. We also have text to give. We have an embeddable donation form so your donors can donate without leaving your website. We have customizable questions to gather even more donor data. We have a volunteer management tool. So if you have opportunities for your donors to get involved, again, back to that relational thing, we don't only want donors who are giving money. We want donors who are involved. We want supporters. And supporters share your message. They also invest in your mission. We also offer detailed fundraising analytics. This can help drive your future campaigns. And with that advanced subscription, we offer a dedicated account manager. You can, if you're interested, you are welcome to request a free demo at mightycause.com slash contact us. We'll be happy to pair you up with one of our experts. They'll walk through not only what we offer, but what you're looking for. What are your fundraising plans for 2023? How can we help you make that happen? And with that, with this giving season, we're offering a special promotion for those of you that participated in Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, and also for those that have joined me on this webinar, so all of you, and we would like to provide any of you that sign up for our annual advanced plan before the end of the year, we want to offer you two free months. So all you need to do is have participated in Giving Tuesday, registered for this webinar, and then mention this webinar when you're speaking with one of our sales representatives. And we'll be happy to provide that free two months to you if you sign up for the annual advance plan before the end of the year. So that's our holiday gift that we would like to extend to all of you. And with that said, let's go ahead and move on to some questions. So if anyone has questions on anything that we've covered, if there's something you'd like to take a peek at again, you can post that in the chat section now. And also as a reminder, uh, we're gonna be emailing the recording of this webinar to all of you who have registered. Certainly if you've attended, uh, you'll receive an email with the recording. I'm also posting a link to the uh, mightycause.com slash contact us if you would like more information that way, if you're interested in our advanced plan, or if you're interested in our essentials package, we're happy to speak to you with that as well. Okay, and we just had a question come in. Beverly, no worries. I'm glad that you joined us. If you're a few minutes late, not a problem at all. Because you've registered and you have access to the webinar, then you will automatically receive that email with the recording. Also, for others in your organization, what we do is we upload all of our webinars into our resource center. So within the resource center, we have a full webinar library. Throughout the year, there's different webinars. We also have blogs, eBooks, case studies for all different kinds of fundraising. That's a great way to find information on some fundraising strategies throughout the year. But in particular, uh, for right now, you'll be able to find all kinds of end of year, Giving Tuesday wrap up information in our resource center as well. And you can find that at mightycause.com in the upper left corner. 
Oh, you are so welcome, Beverly. I'm glad that you asked. So glad that you asked. And any other questions when it comes to some of the thank you suggestions or any of the features on Mighty Cause and using those to help move, move along your thank you strategy? Give it just another minute or so in case anyone is typing. And also a quick reminder, with your reports and your retention and all of that information, all of that is downloadable. Also, if anyone created a campaign on your behalf for Giving Tuesday, or if they're going to for end of the year, let's say they're going to do a personal fundraiser. You can download that information as well. You definitely want to be able to thank anyone who's hosted a campaign on your behalf. So even if it wasn't done for Giving Tuesday, end of year is a great time to reach out to those supporters who have supported you in any way. But definitely anyone who created that campaign or submitted that donation, now is when you want to be sending those, those thank you notes. And that will also be maybe another section or another segmented group of thank yous. Those who have not only donated, but also have encouraged others to donate. That's pretty huge. And peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it goes a long way in gaining new donors. So we want to be sure to thank anyone who's being a mouthpiece out there in the community. We'll give it just another moment. I do have a question here so from Vicki. Yes, so Vicki has asked about a thank you being sent out automatically. So what Mighty Cause does when a donation comes in, we send out immediately following that donation, we send out the tax deductible receipt. Within that receipt, all organizations can add a customized message. Typically, it's a thank you style message. So that goes out automatically. The other thank you that happens is when a donor makes a donation, the donor's automatically taken to the thank you page. Also, you could think of it as a donation confirmation page. And there, that's where donors are able to add pictures, videos, links. That's where the call to action button is. So those two thank yous, the donors receive immediately. That thank you page and the donation receipt. So those go out from Mighty Cause. Those are the only donor outreach items, we'll say, or features that Mighty Cause provides. Other than that, we don't reach out to donors unless there's an issue with their recurring donation. So any other thank you would depend on the, on the nonprofit. Vicki, I hope that that's helpful. That's a great question. Thank you for reaching out. We'll give just a few more moments. And within that, or along the lines of the thank you message that, that Vicki mentioned, if you do create, let's say a secondary campaign page. So if you create a fundraising page that's dedicated just to year-end giving, you can customize that uh, thank you page as well. So that if someone is donating and you wanna keep your regular, I'm going to say your regular evergreen mighty cause page, then that you don't need to change anything. You could just create that separate campaign page and create a particular thank you page there. And Rebecca, thank you for, le for, for reaching out. I was, I've only been using the, the web chat. I typically don't use the question and answer box. Give me one second. Thank you for pasting there or for posting there. Excuse me. And let me just read your question real quickly. So Rebecca has a great question. So several donations came in after Giving Tuesday, and Rebecca was just sort of we'll say that she was compiling those with Giving Tuesday. And then for end of year, maybe that those would be different. Let's say, I'm gonna put words in your mouth, Rebecca, but let's say that those are the 
truly the last week of December. We're going to look at those as those year end gifts. That is absolutely fine. Really, it I'm and this is personal opinion. Typically, when someone is giving that that gift, and we'll say this week, the week of Giving Tuesday, typically in my mind, because this tends to be how I operate, I meant it to be for Giving Tuesday, but just because of timing and what have you, I didn't really get my donation in until Thursday. But kind of that intent and the theme of the week is the Giving Tuesday. So I think sort of compiling them, keeping them all within Giving Tuesday, I think is is perfectly fine, particularly depending on how your, not your budgeting, but your accounting goes. Now, the donations that come in, depending on how you have your disbursement set up, disbursements with, that are set up with EFT, those are anything that's given between the 1st and the 15th of the month, those will be dispersed on the 25th, which will probably be more like the 23rd because it's December and Christmas. But anything after, those are dispersed the following. So that might be based on the disbursements, how you choose to, to qualify those gifts. So I hope that'll be helpful. And Rebecca, yes, the slides should also be, be posted as well in the on our Giving Tuesday page. And Laura has a question similar to Rebecca. Just one moment. So she had a handful of donations over Thanksgiving weekend. So before Giving Tuesday, I think considering those as Giving Tuesday donations is definitely appropriate. One of the things that Mighty Cause does with our Giving Tuesday event is we have early giving. And the benefit of that is it creates some momentum coming up to Giving Tuesday for people who are opposite of me, who want to make sure that they give, they don't want to forget. So I think having those, especially those donations so close to Thanksgiving, I absolutely think having those as part of Giving Tuesday is certainly appropriate. And Beverly, let me take a quick look. You know, and Beverly, there's no, there's absolutely no right or wrong. So Beverly had, she started her Giving Tuesday campaign uh, one week in advance of Giving Tuesday. And then she closed it on November 30th. And she's just asking if that was correct. That is absolutely great. Uh, there's really, there's not a right or a wrong. The benefit of what you did is you have a distinct Giving Tuesday campaign. And that makes it easy now for you to have a distinct end of year giving campaign. So there's a, a, a close to one and an open to that end of year. So absolutely totally works next year if you want to do one long campaign go for it but this year have no fear that is there's nothing wrong with closing that off on the 30th and then starting something down the road for end of year and lee let's let's take a quick look actually lee if you hold that thought so there was a question about the disbursements so with direct deposit disbursements, those are made, donations made the 1st through the 15th are dispersed on the 25th of that month. So I'm gonna take it back to November. So if a donation was made November 1st through 15th, those donations were dispersed on November 25th. Donations made between November 16th and November 30th those will be dispersed December 10th. So most Giving Tuesday gifts are gonna be dispersed December 10th. Donations that are made December 1st through 15th, those will be dispersed around Christmas. I don't know the exact day. And then you'll also have to work in the, with the weekend and everything and bank days. So around the 25th, donations that are made between December 15th and December 31st, those real end of year gifts, those will be dispersed January 10th. I hope that was helpful. And so let me just check. So Lee had set a live campaign. Oh no. Yes. So Lee, what we can do, go ahead and we can 
we can work with you as far as like with that campaign not, not getting out the way that you had wanted it to. Um, what I'm going to suggest is go ahead and email us at support.mightycause.com. That's going to get you paired up with one of our specialists and we can help you out with that. Let me go ahead and add that into our chat real quickly here. So that's going to be support at mightycause.com. So that can, can help you out there. Okay, Beverly, you are very welcome. Okay, glad that that has been been helpful. Yep, donations aren't aren't weekly from Mighty Cause. Now from Stripe, Stripe is different. So you'll have to, oh, sorry, I'm not scrolling down fast enough. Yep, Stripe is different, but with Giving Tuesday, they are coming. Uh, they are coming. Now that's if you have electronic funds transfer. If you are receiving a check, with a check, those are batched monthly. So all donations made between November 1st and November 30th will be dispersed December 10th. And then any donation made between December 1st and 31st, those will be dispersed via check on January 10th. So that's the 10th of every month if you have the, if you have the check. And we do, we have a question, Roya, from uh, regarding paying for the platform for all year round. So we, that donate button, what you can do, and this is gonna be not the Giving Tuesday, just all year round. We have an essentials package and an advanced package. So also if you wanna email either support at mightycause.com or if you wanna go to mightycause.com slash contact us, then you'll see there there's, we have our two different subscriptions. It all depends on what you're interested in as far as what, what tools you need. Of course, the advanced feature provides anything and everything. So there is an annual subscription that you can select for that. And that's right now we're doing a promotion, if you will. I like to think of it more as a gift for those that participated in Giving Tuesday and also registered for this webinar. If you sign up by the end of the year, just mention the webinar to your sales representative. If you sign up for the advanced annual by the end of the year, we'll be happy to give you two free months. So there is a, a subscription fee, but we also would like to offer that, that gift for you all as well. Let's take a look. Rebecca, give me one second just to kind of read over. So Rebecca's asking, she has, she was looking at the overview page, which just as a quick note, uh, the overview page is the top tab on your dashboard. And it has really great analytics, just a real quick, if you want to see what Rebecca has been looking at, how many profile visits, you can do a quick look at how many donors in the last 30 days, the last year, there's a lot of different things, even what your what we reference as the effective fee. So what you've ended up paying for donation fees. So you can see where where that falls in. So there's a lot of a lot of great features there in the overview window. So as Rebecca mentioned, a lot of times part of those profile visits, they will include you all as the uh, the administrators of the page. Unfortunately, we're not able, we, or we don't track those who check that optional, I'm going to call it that optional second tab. So I'm, I'm thinking, well, that Rebecca's referencing it as the optional second tab. So that's when you're looking at your organization page, there's the about section, and then you can create a customized tab with additional information. Unfortunately, we don't have that tracking offered. Uh, the one of the things that you can do as far as sort of checking to see who's really read any of that content is just and, and this this will sound kind of simple, but check around with the people at your organization and say, hey, did you go to the page? What did you see? Did you did you check out that other tab? Did you see what I have there? Or if there's any other donors, do a spot check 
reach out to them to say, hey, just checking on your experience. By the way, did you happen to see X, Y, Z? And Erica has a question. Just one moment. Let me go ahead and read that. So great question. Erica asked, is there a way to require donors to provide their mailing address so we can send thank you notes? So within your within the downloaded report, when you're looking at just the reports tab, that's only gonna show the essential information. So the name, how much they donated and their email address, like you mentioned, as well as the campaign that they donated to. But if you download the report, so towards the upper right corner, there's a download button. When you download the report, what you'll have in the report is the billing address that the donor used during checkout. So that often will be where people send those thank you notes, where nonprofits send the thank you notes. Now, not everyone's billing address is the same as their mailing address. So if you would like to, with the essentials subscription, you have the option to add a single question to your checkout flow. You can do that within the, just keeping in mind for next year, with Giving Tuesday, when you're registered for Giving Tuesday, you receive that option to do the customized question for free. You don't have to sign up for the essentials package for that. It's already available being a part of Giving Tuesday. So that's one option to use the question to request for the mailing address if different from the billing address. Also within the advanced subscription, you have the option for up to 10 customizable questions. So some people, some organizations will choose to include the question mail, requesting mailing address if different than the billing address. One of the other options or, or ways to sort of use that question is asking if someone's interested in your newsletter. Uh, and that also is a good way to start building some of that relationship throughout the year where it's not just the thank you note, but also the newsletter. Very good question. Just make sure to download the report and that'll be in the upper right corner. Yep, you're very welcome, very welcome. And that's gonna be with most of the different options. So whether it's your campaigns report or if you're looking at your retention report or your offline donations report, you can select the download button and towards that upper right corner. So for those subscriptions, so we have, Roya asked for just a little bit more with the subscriptions. So there's the two subscriptions, there's essential and there's advanced. With the essential subscription, that's $59 a month. We offer that annually as well. So the way you can sort of consider the essentials subscription, basically everything you had with the Giving Tuesday, when you registered for Giving Tuesday, for the most part, all of that's included in essentials, for the most part. For example, the events option, the events campaign, those that's only part of advanced, but essentials, pretty much all the features you had for Giving Tuesday are part of the essentials package. And that's $59 a month for our annual subscription. And then when you look at the advanced subscription, that unlocks every feature on the platform, including even if you wanted to add domain masking. So there's that as well. So there's every feature opens up with advanced and that annual subscription is $99 a month. And with the promotion today, if you mention the webinar, when you're talking with your sales representative, then that's where that two free months comes in. So essentials is the 59 a month and then the advanced, so it's only another $40 more, unlocks everything, and that's the 99 a month for the annual subscription. I hope that was helpful. Okay. Oh, Rebecca, I am so glad that this was, was helpful. Please definitely check out the Resource Center. I hope you take care, Rebecca. Have a wonderful holiday season. And we'll give it just a few more minutes. And of course, if any questions come up afterwards, you know, you're thinking about it tomorrow or this afternoon and you're like, oh, 
I should have asked X, Y, Z, go ahead and reach out to our customer support, support at mightycause.com. You all are so welcome. I am so glad that you joined today, that you carved out that time for us. I really appreciate it. We'll give just another moment in case somebody has a question. If you need to go ahead and jump off, I totally understand. I hope you all have just a truly wonderful holiday season, a successful time fundraising. I hope it's fun. I hope that you enjoy your thank you note writing parties. I hope that you can enjoy creating your content for the end of year. And definitely please reach out if you have any questions. That can be support at mightycause.com. Support at mightycause.com. Okay, great. Lee, we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining today. Erica, you are most welcome. Thank you for your questions. Oh, and the recording, the recording is going to be emailed to everyone who registered. So whether you are late or early, it doesn't matter if you just jumped on for the last five minutes, you'll receive a recording of the webinar in your email. We also will be posting this on the Giving Tuesday website. And we also will have this in our resource center. And we have a whole library of recordings of webinar recordings. And you can access the resource library in the upper right corner of mightycause.com. So mightycause.com, not the upper right, go to the upper left. It's in the upper left-hand corner. So with that, again, I just wanna thank everybody for joining. Please have a wonderful, a safe holiday season and happy fundraising.